You are welcome to watch my first video. Today we're gonna talk about a condition we call it galactosemia. And first thing first, I'm gonna ask you how much do you know about this condition? Definition, types, pathophysiology, diagnosis, treatment, and even more. If you answer my question, then let's begin with the case. A very beautiful newborn named Layla was breastfed, but on the second day she vomited several times. The following day she developed diarrhea and lost weight. On the fifth day she was found to be jaundice. Physical examination revealed liver enlargement, which means hepatomegaly. On the 10th day, cataracts were noticed in the lenses of her eyes. The total sugar concentration in her blood was raised, but the glucose was low, which means hypoglycemia. Her urine gave a positive test for sugar, which was shown to be galactose. Layla was put on a firm melamel, on which seemed to improve. And by the end of the following month, she improved well, but her cataracts remained. So, what's galactosemia? Galactosemia means accumulation of galactose in the blood. And is a rare genetic metabolic disorder. Why do we say it is a rare condition? Because it occurs in approximately one of every 60,000 live, live births. And why do we say it's a genetic condition? Simply because it follows an autosomal recessive mode of inheritance. As you see here, if the parents were, were both carriers and not affected, there will be 25 percent chance of their child will have a galactosemia. It follows an autosomal recessive mode of inheritance. What's the pathophysiology? Lactose, which is a disaccharide, is hydrolyzed by the enzyme lactase to release galactose and glucose. Galactose and glucose are monosaccharides. The main sources of lactose are mainly milk and also some fruits and vegetables like tomato, banana and even apples. Furthermore, the galactose is converted to glucose and goes into glycolysis pathway. And we're gonna talk about this pathway in a very simple pathway in a very simple way. First thing first, we said lactose is hydrolyzed to galactose and glucose. Then the galactose will be converted to galactose 1-phosphate by which enzyme? By enzyme galactokinase. You should remember this enzyme galactokinase because it's matter in this condition. And then galactose 1-phosphate were converted to glucose 1-phosphate by which enzyme? By enzyme GALT, which means galactose uridyl transferase. At the same time, there will be a conversion of a UDP galactose to UDP glucose by the enzyme galactose epimerase. What do we mean by UDP? Udenine diphosphate galactose. To udenine diphosphate glucose by the enzyme galactose epimerase. These both reactions are reversible. Then glucose 1 phosphate were converted to glucose 6 phosphate by the enzyme phosphoglucomutase. By the enzyme phospho, phospho what? Phosphogluco, glucose, glucomutase, phosphoglucomutase. 
then glucose 6 phosphate were converted to glucose and also goes into glycolysis pathway. You should know there are three types. Type 1 if the defect was in the the transferase. And we call classic galactosemia or duartic galactosemia. And duartic galactosemia differs from classic galactosemia in that. Patients with duartic galactosemia have partial gall deficiency. Whereas patients with classic galactosemia have complete or almost complete gall deficiency. So, which one is milder? We said, duartic galactosemia, we have partial gall deficiency. So, duartic galactosemia is milder one, because it's partial deficiency. Which one is more common? Fortunately, the duartic galactosemia is more common than classic galactosemia. Type 2. Type 2 if the defect was in the galactokinase enzyme and it's called galactokinase deficiency. Type 3. Type 3 if the defect was in galactose epimerase enzyme and it's called galactose epimerase deficiency. Accumulation of galactose in tissues leads to its reduction to galactitol by this formula 1 by the galactose to galactitol by the enzyme aldose reductase and also there must be a conversion of NADPH to NADP positive then accumulation of galactitol will lead to hepatomegaly and also cataracts Actually, any single deficient enzyme can result in cataracts through the accumulation of galactitol in the lenses of the eyes. The signs and symptoms With hepatosplenomegaly due to accumulation of galactitol and also there will be fail to thrift. Also, we said there will be cataracts as we saw that in that case. Well, there is a hepatosplenomegaly, which means liver enlargement and spleen enlargement, there will be joints, absolutely and definitely. Also, we, we can see vomiting. And what do we mean by joints? We mean accumulation of bilirubin in the blood. And accumulation of bilirubin in the blood will lead to mental retardation. Also, we see diarrhea. Sometimes we see seizures and weight loss. If there is vomiting and diarrhea, absolutely there will be weight loss. Sometimes irritability and lethargy. Now we're gonna talk about the complications. There will be hypoglycemia, which means low levels of uh, glucose in the blood. And also there will be metabolic acidosis resulting either from the accumulation of acids in the blood or the abnormal loss of bases from the body as in diarrhea or renal disease. Also there will be ascites, the accumulation of fluid in the peritoneal cavity causing abdominal swallowing and irreversible brain damage. What's the long-term conditions? There will be developmental delay, speech problems, sterility. This is very bad, sterile. And last thing, we're gonna talk about the diagnosis. So, diagnosis can be made before the birth or even after the birth. If the family of the baby has a history of galactosemia, can you test prior to birth 
by taking a sample of flow from around the fetus, which we call it amniocentesis. Amniocentesis test. So, what's the amniocentesis test? The sampling of amniotic flow using a hollow needle inserted into the uterus to screen the developmental abnormalities in our fetus. Or we can take a sample of flow from the placenta, which we call it chorionic glass sampling, CVS. Then what's chorionic glass sampling? It's a test made in early pregnancy to detect congenital abnormalities in the fetus. A tiny tissue sample is taken from the villi of the chorion, which forms the better part of the placenta. Or can be made while the person is still infant. Newborn screening, if available, is able to diagnose the majority of affected infants. So newborn screening, NBS, designed to screen babies soon after their birth. Symptoms might not be apparent at birth. As part of these procedures, babies are tested within 48 to 72 hours of their birth. By making a pink print puncture in the head and collecting a blood sample on pre-printed collection cards. And for your extra information, can even be detected through NBS, newborn screening, before any ingested of galactose containing formula or breast milk. Also, I gonna tell you that there are two screening tests are used to screen infants affected with galactosemia: the Bettler's test and the Hill test. Thank you very much for watching.